Okay, welcome back. We're going to read those shoes for the second time this week. This time when we read the story, we are going to make sure that we're following along with Mrs. Mogul, that our eyes are on the screen listening to and reading along with the story. And I'm also going to be stopping to ask you some questions. You'll be able to pause the video and write down your responses and go back if you forget something. So remember when we read a story, the, the genre of the story is very important. This story happens to be realistic fiction, a story that tells about events that could really happen, but this isn't a true story. Here's the characters. They're the people in the story. We have Grandma, Jeremy, and Antonio. And in this story, Jeremy is the one telling the story. And so he uses words like I, me, and my to tell this story. Let's begin. You'll notice as we go through up in the corner, it says set a purpose. Some of the pages will have these little purple words with some notes. Those are important to read. Good readers look at the whole page and we read everything. So up here it says set a purpose. Jeremy wants new shoes, but there is a problem. Find out what it is. Now, you might remember from our last time reading this story that Jeremy wants new shoes, but maybe you don't remember the problem and maybe you do. I'm going to read along. We're gonna stop and write in our journal as we go, but listen up. I have dreams about those shoes, black high tops. Ooh, notice the word high tops, it's bolded. Many times when words in our text are bolded, then there's going to be some notes maybe down at the bottom. So down here you'll notice it says in other words. So high tops, and then it will tell you what high tops are. They're sports shoes, like maybe basketball shoes or soccer shoes. They're good supporting shoes. I have dreams about shoes, black high tops, two white stripes. Grandma, I want them. There you see it, he wants those shoes. And what does grandma say? There's no room for want around here, grandma says. What you need are new boots for winter. Pause the story right here. Jeremy wants new shoes, but there's a problem. Can you identify one of the problems? Pause and then we'll begin again. Brandon T comes to school in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now, not me. I was always the fastest runner until before those shoes came along. Oh, notice we have bold words again. Where am I gonna find those bold words? Down here at the bottom. In other words, those shoes came along means that Brandon T got those shoes. And if you notice in the picture, there's Brandon T and he has the shoes. Look at poor Jeremy. Doesn't he look like, oh, so sad. Next, Alan Jacoby and Terrence each get a pair. There's our bold words. Each get a pair, they get the same shoes. Notice in the picture, all of these kids that have those shoes that Jeremy wants. Look at Jeremy's poor face. I'm gonna go in so you can see his face. Have you ever wanted something that somebody else has had before? Turning the page. I'm gonna scan, is there anything in the corner? Ooh, here's some words I'm gonna to have to pay attention to. And then down here it says before we move on. So we'll want to answer those questions. Good readers, answer the questions. Then, one day, in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Can you identify where I would find what comes apart means? If you pointed right here, you are right. Comes apart means it tears. So one of his shoes tore, right? Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy, Mr. Alfrey, the guidance counselor says. Guidance counselor's bolded. Down here. Adults who help students solve problems. Oh, does Jeremy have a problem? Remember in the plot, there's always a problem and a solution. Back to our reading. He gives me a pair of shoes with a cartoon animal on it. When I come back to the classroom, the only kid not laughing is Antonio Parker. Can you identify Antonio Parker in that picture? Right? He's right here, he's not laughing. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Alfrey. I nod and turn my back. Right here, turn my back means to turn away. I'm not going to cry about any dumb shoes. Then the page has this purple words, before you move on. 
clarify. That means gain more understanding. Why can't Jeremy get the shoes he wants? Pause the video and answer the question. Why can't Jeremy get the new shoes he wants? Okay, question number two. Character's motive. This is the question, why does Jeremy want the black high tops? Ooh, that's a great question. Why does Jeremy want the black high tops? Pause the video, answer the question. Okay, back to the story. Notice we have prediction up here that we're going to pay attention to and lots of in other words. This time I'm going to read the in other words. So maybe when we get to them, we have a better understanding of what they mean. Check out means to look at. Set aside means to save. You never know means you might be surprised. Checks the price means looks to see how much the shoes cost and heavy in a sad way. You're going to make a prediction about what will Jeremy do to get the new black shoes. Let's listen. On Saturday, Grandma says, let's check out those shoes you're wanting so much. Remember to look at. I got a little bit of money set aside, saved up. It might be enough. You never know. You might be surprised. Okay. Can you make a prediction? What will Jeremy do to get the new black shoes? Think about that. At the shoe store, Grandma turns those shoes over. She checks the price, right? She looks to see how much they cost. When she does it, when she sees it, she sits down heavy. Think in your mind, why does she sit down heavy? Heavy means in a sad way. Maybe they wrote it down wrong, I say. Grandma shakes her head. Notice the characters' faces in the story at this moment. Is Grandma excited to buy those shoes? Can Grandma afford those shoes? On this page, you'll notice that we have more bolded words. Thrift shop are stores that sell used clothes. Accept the ones means but not the shoes. And in sight means anywhere. So let's pay attention. Then I remember the thrift shops. Remember, stores that sell used clothes. We ride the bus to the first one. There's every kind of shoe except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second thrift shop. Not a pair of those shoes in sight. Around the corner is the third thrift shop. I see something in the window. I shove my foot into the first shoe. Grandma feels for my toes at the end of the shoe. Now notice what he's thinking. This little bubble shows what Jeremy is thinking. And he says, high tops, perfect shape, $2.50 those shoes. He found them. Now maybe you can remember from the last time that we read, do the shoes fit? Let's find out. Check out the other words, the bold words. Spend good money means to use money I've worked hard to save. Don't fit means are too small. This is a big long phrase. Two big feet shuffling around in my two big, two small shoes means his shoes are too small. And then stretch means to get bigger, okay? Oh, Jeremy, she says, I can't spend good money on shoes that don't fit. She says, I can't spend my hard or earned money on shoes that are too small. They're okay, I say, curling my toes. Then I buy them with my own money. A few days later, Grandma puts a new pair of snow boots in my closet. She doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in my two small shoes. Sometimes shoes stretch, I say. Let's look down here before we move on. Confirm your prediction. Confirm what you think was going to happen. What actions did Jeremy take to get the black shoes? Was your prediction correct? Pause the video, check your prediction, and decide were you correct or not correct. Now look at this one, it says character. How do Jeremy's actions show what kind of person he is? How do Jeremy's actions show what kind of person he is? Think about that. Let's move on. Ooh, we have some more predicting we need to do. And more bold words. 
Up here we're going to predict, what will Jeremy do with the two small shoes? You might remember, but let's find out. In other words, my Mr. Alfrey means the shoes Mr. Alfrey gave me. Glance means to look quickly. And taped up means held together with tape. In, I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear my Mr. Alfrey's instead. One day during math, I glance up at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up and his feet look smaller than mine. That night, I am awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. And here's a picture. And he's thinking, I'm not going to do it. Hmm. When morning comes, I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door. I push the doorbell and run. Have you ever done that before? Left something on someone's porch? At school, I feel happy when I look at Antonio's face and mad when I look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. Why is he mad about his Mr. Alfrey shoes? Later, snow is everywhere. Then I remember what I have in my backpack, new black boots. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward. Thanks, he says. I smile and give him a nudge. Let's race. Can you find on this page what the word nudge means? Oh, if you found it right here, a friendly push. Before you move on, you're going to confirm your prediction. What do you think your Jeremy would do with the small What did you think Jeremy would do with the small shoes? Was your prediction correct? Character. How does Jeremy feel about helping Antonio? And how do you know? Answer number two in your journal. How does Jeremy feel about helping Antonio? How do you know? What can you see in the story that makes you understand how Antonio and Jeremy feel? And that's the end of our story.